So uh, if uh, people want to get a little closer, that'd be cool. Um, but uh, this is going to be very interactive. So actually, please do get closer, because um, I'm going to be walking through code. And if you don't ask questions, I'll just be like, I know all this. And I'll just go fast. And you might not know it. And so the kind of, kind of the goal is to explain it as I walk through it. Um, and there will be things that I kind of you know, scratch my head at and like, oh, uh, this isn't the code that I'm currently using. Um, this is this is Rackspace's code, so which I've worked on previously and have you know pulled and and sent patches back and forth. But it's not what I use day to day. So, uh, Rackspace Private Cloud. Uh, currently, uh, this branch is uh, for the Folsom release. It's tagged as version 3.0.1. So if you go to uh, Rackspace.com Cloud Private, you can download. Uh, an installer that will go and install, uh, it'll install uh, OpenStack on like 20 nodes, something like that. Uh, this code is being worked on by uh, uh, about 10 developers. Um, it's good stuff. Uh, it has a, an open source Chef server uh, embedded inside it, uh, and they're just kind of treating it like a JRE, where uh, it does exactly what they need. The repo there, GitHub uh, RCB Ops, that's the team that's working on this stuff. So that's a bunch of their operational uh, cookbooks, um, some of the other things that we're not going to really cover today. Uh, but it's all up on GitHub. Rackspace has been really great about sharing uh, the work that they're doing so you can follow along and make sure that you know if, if you don't want to use the, the product to deliver it, you can take the cookbooks and merge them. Uh, we have a whole community uh, around Chef and OpenStack be happy to talk about that. Uh, if we have way too much time at the end, I'll pull up a slide deck from a meeting today. Um, but uh, there's a lot of people working on, on this. Uh, RCB Ops Cookbooks is the actual uh, kind of the chef repo that you use to run this infrastructure. So I'm going to kind of walk through that as we go here. This is a, a high level uh, uh, architecture of the Rackspace Private Cloud product. Um, they've added a new, uh, a new product called uh, Open Center. It's kind of a, a controller for the nodes um, on top of it. It gives you a nice little UI. Uh, there's Chef Server embedded there in the middle that is you know, managing the state of, of pretty much everything. And then there are cookbooks that map to the different services. That's what it looks like. What's that? Sure. Hey, look, there's Evan. Yeah, but then they won't get you on the recording. Oh, there we go. Uh, Open Center is not just an API. It's um, several pieces all together that comprises the product. So it has an API, um, which is uh, basically a state machine with a REST interface attached to it. And then there's also the CLI tools, and there's the uh, GUI, the dashboard. And it's uh, agent-based, as I believe is illustrated there on the, on the slide. And then there is a component called the solver that tries to determine how to get from uh, the current state you're in to the uh, desired state that you want to go to and to figure out what needs to happen to get there. So that's how you interact with it. Yes. Uh, it, is, it is the infrastructure level. It is not even up to platform level. So basically, you're starting from uh, blank nodes that uh, you want to actually uh, put whatever operating system you're going to deploy onto on and go from that point forward. So then it will be using Chef through the orchestration layer to actually uh, put on whatever roles you want on right. those machines. And, and your bare metal provisioner would be Razor. Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's... Uh, No, it's it's much lower than a pass. Yeah, it's it's below pass. Yeah, this would this is. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so if you're following along in your Git browser, or in your Git browser, in your web browser on GitHub, uh, you can go right here. Um, I've already cloned this locally. Uh, we're going to be walking through the roles, the environments, and the cookbooks. So uh, everyone got that. GitHub.com, RCB Ops, Chef Cookbooks. Uh, that's where the magic happens. And here comes the magic. So this is all the cookbooks that are currently uh, Git sub-moduled in there. 
Uh, there are quite a few. Um, some you might say, well, why do I need these uh, for an OpenStack deployment? Such things as uh, the AWS cookbook. <laughs> uh, most of the, the cookbooks uh, that are in here are supporting, or, or the ones that are, you know, like, why is that there, are supporting uh, dependencies for some of the other cookbooks. So the MySQL cookbook actually depends on the AWS cookbook because it has a recipe for tuning MySQL on AWS. So that's why that's there. Build Essentials there because we're building uh, some uh, Ruby modules from source. Uh, Erlang's there as a dependency of Rabbit. Um, you know, uh, keep alive for the HA stuff that we won't be going through today. Uh, you know, the monitoring, the monit, uh, we're not gonna dive into that. We're gonna stick to, you know, uh, bare, uh, the, the basics of, of OpenStack. So, and SOS report is your agent, or monitoring stuff. Monitoring stuff. Yeah, monitoring stuff, sure. Close <laughs> enough. Uh, we ours. also won't be talking about Swift, uh, just in, for time. So, the, the cook, the, uh, the deployment uh, follows the pattern of using an environment to set attributes, push them into the cookbooks, and that's how uh, everything pretty much works. Uh, the environments, um, so the roles actually don't have very many uh, attributes. We're, we're putting the things that uh, we care about in the environment level. Uh, so if you're familiar with Chef, the, the precedents, we're just doing overrides to say, boom, this is how everything's going to be, um, deal with it. So looking at the example JSON that is bundled in the repo, uh, oh, you know, I've got a laser pointer. Uh, you know, the, the, the name and description, of course, are kind of boilerplate stuff. There are no cookbook versions enforced by this role, or by this environment. Um, that is something that, you know, you may want to do. Uh, if you're doing like a continuous integration pipeline with multiple, uh, with multiple OpenStack deployments, you'd probably want to start locking down your cookbook versions. Um, the JSON class that's boilerplate for in the environment. Uh, you know, there are no default attributes because that's, we're, we're using this strictly for overrides. Uh, but as we get into the override attributes, uh, as we get into the override attributes, the first thing we see is developer mode false. If you need additional debugging, developer mode true. You know, it's pretty straightforward there. Uh, for monitoring, you know, the, the Rackspace stuff is using Collecti and Monit. Uh, the cookbooks that uh, I'm using don't because, you know, different people have a different opinions about monitoring and logging and that kind of stuff. So when we run into that in the recipes, I'll be like, I'm not using that in my stuff. Uh, Rackspace is trying to get to uh, pull that stuff out a little bit more to make the cookbooks less opinionated for Rackspace so other people can find them, you know, useful for whatever their choices are for monitoring. Uh, glance, you know, upload image true. Um, the, the images, it's, it's pulling these out of the attributes file for glance. So the URLs are there for, for uh, Cirrus and Precise. It's pulling them off of UEC and the Cirrus site. You can override these. So if you have local mirrors of those images, you don't have to pull them off the internet. You know, I think uh, you guys are pulling them off the internet because they don't want to bundle, you know, Ubuntu images and, and Cirrus images in their, their uh, deployment. Um, these uh, attributes relate to Nova. Uh, we'll see these again uh, later. Uh, whether or not to raid limit on the API and volume, uh, the libvert, uh, the vert type uh, of QMU. Um, that you, you know, obviously, if you're going to use uh, like uh, LXC or something, you, you could change that. Uh, the networks. So uh, this is actually for setting up the networks on the. Uh, the, the host. So when the host, in this case, has uh, two uh, Ethernet uh, adapters, uh, one becomes the public network. Uh, that's what your VMs are going to connect to to go out to the internet or to, you know, to your, your guests, uh, to your consumers of your OpenStack uh, uh, IIS. And the private is the network that all the communications on the back end are doing. So uh, the Nova to Swift, the, you know, Nova to Glance communications all happen on the back end private network. The reason we're labeling them is because uh, you actually could make these exactly the same if you only had one NIC, but it, you know, the goal is to have multiple NICs to se segment your traffic. Yes? Aren't they pointing the same NIC? 
In this case, yes, they are. Okay. No, no, they're, they're, they're VLANs off, off the same NIC, right. but yes, yeah. they are both E0. Uh, but if you had you know, an ETH1, um, the reason we're naming them is uh, you know, later we could add a storage or a, uh, a management or something like that. So you might have you know, three or four NICs in a box, which you know, would not be uncommon. If, you're, if you looked at the crowbar stuff, they have the same kind of thing where you know, they bond them and, you know, uh, but you know, it's not that crazy. Uh, over here are the attributes for MySQL, you know, allowing you to, to log into it remotely. So, um, you know, you can create the schemas. Um, OSOps network. So these are, these map you back to the same ones here, 192. Uh, this is the ones that the, the uh, instances are going to use. Um, and in this case, it's all the same. Uh, and then package component, Fulsome. So we're going to be using the Fulsome packages. So there are a boatload of roles uh, in this, in this uh, uh, Chef repo. We're not going to use all these. You know, obviously, uh, there are lots of different ways you may deploy uh, this, this OpenStack uh, Using, using this repo. The reason there are so many is because you know, we're gonna dive into the all-in-one. So a single box, you know, if you wanna run everything on one box, you'd run the all-in-one role, which of course is going to have dependencies on other roles, which depend on other roles and depend on other roles. As you break apart that hierarchy, you can map those to separate machines. So things like uh, Glance, you know, the Glance role, well, it actually, that maps into Glance API, Glance registry, and Glance setup. You could have those on separate machines. So each one of these can map out to multiple machines. And then there's, uh, there's HA stuff in there as well, the HA controllers. Um, and so, and when, and when you start doing multiple machines, you can just run uh, single compute on, you know, so you could do N plus one and have, you know, single controller running, you know, ev everything, and then single compute just fanning out for multiple compute nodes. And that's a pretty common if you're doing like 20 boxes, you know, where you, it's not exactly super HA, but you have, you know, one box that does all the, you know, detail work, and then everyone else is just compute. Yes? No, Chef does not support multiple environments. Uh, Chef does not support multiple environments on a single node. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yes, there's definitely a use case for multiple environments. Uh, it came out wrong. Question was, is there a use case for multiple environments? Absolutely, absolutely. So if you have uh, different machines on different networks and they're all talking the same Chef server, you just say, you know, hey, you guys are in the QA environment, you guys are in the production environment, you can, you know, and then you set up the attributes different ways. Maybe in QA, the, you know, the uh, developer, developer mode is true. You know, you want all that verbose logging to see when things fall over and sideways. And then, you know, when you go into production, you turn off debug and, you know, maybe uh, you, you know, maybe in production, you only have, you have four NICs. You actually have four NICs, but in QA, you only have one or two. You know, so definitely, you would have multiple environments and uh, this is just, you know, the example. But, and then, you know, if you're doing like a, a CI environment, you would probably uh, use cookbook versions to lock the versions that actually go into production. So QA you could unlock, but production you'd lock them down so stuff doesn't accidentally get in. So starting at the top, uh, kind of here I'm gonna be jumping between the roles and then the recipes and cookbooks that they map to. So uh, we'll be going between slides and, and actual uh, code. Uh, the all-in-one role, you know, we're going to take one box and we're going to turn it into an all-in-one Nova. So, uh, you know, as it says, this will create an all-in-one OpenStack cluster. Uh, all-in-one just calls single controller and single compute. The roles are pretty smart. So, you know, single controller, uh, all-in-one, actually, when you apply this to one box, that's the run list that we're going to walk through. So, we have a lot of recipes to look at, but that's, that's what they are. Some of them we'll probably skip. So single controller, uh, Nova controller, non-HA. Um, that's a lot of stuff, right? But if, if you look at it, it's just, you know, we're gonna set up MySQL, Rabbit, and then we go Keystone, Glance, Nova, Horizon. Now that's pretty straightforward. 
Uh, there's no Nova Compute in here because Nova Compute's gonna run on something else. So if we're doing the, in the, the one plus n model, you know, single controller and compute nodes, you know, you put this on, on that guy. Definitely non-HA. So looking at the base role, um, this is gonna get applied to pretty much everything. So the base role gets uh, used a lot. This is what uh, Rackspace wants every single machine to have. You know, anybody who's running, uh, you know, the base role is a very common pattern in, in, uh, chef, uh, in the chef world. People have a base role, it's like everybody is gonna do this. In this case, uh, they're using OSOPS utils packages to set up the package repos. We're not gonna look at that recipe. Uh, OpenSSH, that's the community OpenSSH, you know, make sure SSH is on there. Uh, NTP, very important in Chef, and with Chef, uh, you can't have clock skew. Uh, SOS report is uh, monitoring stuff that, you know, we're not gonna go into. Uh, our syslog, you know, they're using syslog. This is gonna make sure that it's set up, so any, all the boxes are, are using syslog the same way. Uh, recipe hardware. Uh, I assume that's around uh, like NIC setup. Yep, NIC setup. And, and OSOPS utils default. Uh, what is that doing? Should I, let's pull it up. You should go look at it. It's gonna be exciting. So the OSOPS utils, this is uh, a utility library that Rackspace wrote uh, with, uh, well back when Vish was working there, uh, with uh, Dell and uh, DreamHost. And it, uh, it's a bunch of libraries for you know, doing searches of you know, IP locations, databases, and applying patches. You know, it, it doesn't really fit in anything else, so it's OSOPS utils. Uh, but the recipe, uh, what was the recipe there? Packages, oh, okay, default. Let's see what default looks like. Oh yeah, syscontrol. Um, so yeah, that's just tuning the OS. You know, not uh, super exciting. Uh, syscontrol is one of the cookbooks included. Um, this is not the syscontrol that's on the community site, but there's like nine of them. So, um, and they all kind of do the same thing. Someone should clean that up. Uh, but this is just tuning for Rabbit. You know, not super exciting. Uh, but that's the base role. Um, throws in some, some NTP servers, uh, just so everybody behaves the same way. So, th yes? I'm, I'm new to the so what oh, okay. Between the recipe and the role, and how do I find what the recipe is? Okay, uh, so, uh, back up real quick. The difference between a recipe and a role. Um, in, in Chef, uh, a cookbook is how you deliver a piece of functionality, like a particular application or a service. So. If we go back to our list of cookbooks, each one of these kinds of maps to something you're going to configure, right? Um, and inside of the cookbook is the recipe. The recipe is the actual, the Ruby code that, you know, it has the, the resources that you're going to set up, you know, going to calculate things. So as we just looked at that, uh, the syscontrol settings, that's what, that was a recipe. There may be multiple recipes inside a cookbook. So when we look at a run list, uh, OSOPS utils, packages, we saw that, OpenSSH, these are just the recipes that are getting called. You know, the colon colon is specifying which one of the recipes within that particular cookbook we're going to call, okay? Um, if there's not a colon colon, it's default. Yeah. Uh, so a role, a role is a way of saying this is a particular class of machines. You know, this is something that anybody who has this is going to do these things. Roles may include other roles, um, but they have a run list. You know, a run list that says these are the things that it means to be a base. You know, if you apply this on a machine, well, sorry, I've got single controller up there. Um, you know, this is the things that you get with a base. And a role has uh, a run list and then it has attributes, default or overrides. Yes? I can't. <laughs> uh, somebody know Puppet can answer that. I really, I'm not a Puppet guy, surprisingly. Um, but uh, that sounds right. Modules? Modules or cookbooks? Manifest or cookbooks? Okay. Uh, and then is there, they have some concept of roles? Okay. 
Okay, okay. So in chef terminology, a node is the end point, is the actual machine. Yeah. And then, you know, that machine has a run list. And that run list may be uh, re recipes or roles, you know, or a mix of them. So, you know, in this case we see, you know, these are just roles in our run list. And this one, the, the run list is actually recipes, you can mix them, right? And then role is the class of the machines. Uh, and then uh, above roles are environments. So you say, you know, a machine can have multiple roles, it can have multiple, you know, recipes, it has a single run list in a single environment. Okay? Any other questions? I mean, sorry, I, I guess I assumed uh, a little more uh, familiarity with what we're doing. Um, but that's the base role. You know, table stakes for being a node in uh, Rackspace Private Cloud. Uh, so the first role in the single controller, or uh, the first one we're going to look at here, is MySQL Master. This is just installing MySQL, setting up replication if you're using two nodes. Um, see, it calls the base role again. That's not a problem. It, uh, with, with Chef, when it creates that run list, it deduplicates them. So the first time it sees it, that's the, the first time it gets called. And it's okay to have it get called multiple times in the run list. So base is in everything, just because you may have a MySQL box. When you start federating this out to multiple machines, maybe in a larger deployment, you might have a box that he does all the MySQL for you. You know, that's the only thing that machine does. You still need that base role. So you can say, hey, that's the MySQL master. Uh, and he's gonna call MySQL OpenStack server. So let's take a quick glance over at that. So this is a, a cookbook that's just helper stuff for, my, for OpenStack. It wraps the MySQL cookbook. So it's going to pull things in some of those libraries that we saw in OSOPS Utils. Uh, it's gonna include monitoring, and it's gonna set up uh, the MySQL Ruby cookbook. That just installs the, the MySQL gem, so, you, so Chef can make straight uh, MySQL calls. Um, these methods get bind endpoints, uh, that's coming out of OSOPS Utils. So what this is doing uh, is just setting up MySQL to listen on, uh, you know, wh where to, to listen, and then it just, you know, tunes it. Oh, look at that, I am first MySQL master. Um, and then, you know, it's setting up replication. Uh, connection info, you know, pulling you know, the bind IP that we got, the username, the password, which you can pass it in, or up here at the top, it actually just uh, generates one if you don't have one. Yeah. Uh, and then it saves it on the node, so later on, you know, all your machines get their own passwords. You know, then, uh, looks like it configures a slave. Hey, there's new code, I haven't seen all this stuff. Um, and then we're see we, uh, you know, officially, so up here it's, it's setting, uh, I went off the screen, you know, connect to the master because we're the slave, and then we're going to set an attribute, why is this, uh, identifying us as a second master, um, you know, then, you know, oh, if we were the first master, we've connected back to the second master yet. So it actually waits to make sure that the stuff's... The first master is setting attribute that you're using to perform... Yes. Roles. Yes. Yeah. And so uh, that's, if you're new to Chef, that's a very common pattern, is to use attributes to say, hey, I'm doing this particular... I provide this certain thing, and then people who are looking for that will just search for you. You know, and then if they... In this case, they'll just search for someone else who is MySQL master, and then when they get that node back, they'll look for the, the ID. So, configure your slave, and hey, look at that. Clean up the craptastic MySQL default users. Um, you know, the, uh, the MySQL that ships from Ubuntu has uh, a bunch of stuff already there. Um, and so we take it out. Uh, and then we r render, you know, the, the configuration file for MySQL. And then they do some monitoring stuff that, you know, I'm not really into. Yeah. 
Yes, yeah. So in your searches, you say and chef environment equals, and then you say no to environment. So you search for everyone who's in my environment only. Um, if I'm not, was it doing that? Uh, or is that in the OSOPS utils? It's in the utils. The utils has search helpers. Right. <laughs> Ta-da. Uh, yeah. Um, there is a patch uh, that I think is going into like 11.6 or 11.8 that I think automatically adds it as like a, you know, search comma environment. <laughs> so that's, uh, you know, that just sets up our our MySQL uh, master slave. It, it actually didn't create the schema. It just set up MySQL ready to go for OpenStack. So the next thing that happens is Rabbit gets set up. Yes? I just looked up in the code that showed you this, but I'm assuming the search has to automatically run for a chef. Yes, yes. So what, what happens in, in Chef is this, uh, we've assigned this, this role of all-in-one to a node. And then that node, I can try to do it and we'll see what happens. Um, ready? Live demo. No. Actually, I know this will blow up because it's a VM and I just, there's nothing on it. Uh, uh, but it'll start and you'll see what it looks like until it blows up because I haven't set up, you know, multiple NICs on my VMs here. And that's, but, you know, it's fun to, it's fun to watch this blow up. It's educational. Let me go clean install, dump save. So I've got, oh, come on network, thinking it over, thinking it over. Wow, that was a fast, change of directory. So I have these two VMs. Uh, one of them is just an, an app cacher uh, ng, so I, I, I cached all my stuff. Um, but if I say knife node show Ubuntu 2.vm, this guy I've assigned the all-in-one role. Um, so right here, this is what a node looks like. Um, I gave him the all-in-one role. Uh, he also has the Emacs 24 role because I was writing an Emacs 24 cookbook. Um, but anyway, he's, he's got all in one. And so this stuff will get wiped out after he runs. So let's see what happens when a freshly provisioned VM actually runs. And it actually will probably be really slow and we'll just come back to it. But So when you're on the box, you just say chef client and that's going to connect to the server and says, hey, I'm Ubuntu 2.12.04 VM, what am I supposed to do? And he says, oh, hi there. Here's the run list that you have. You know, uh, we're gonna synchronize our cookbooks. We're gonna download all the ones that we need uh, to, to actually do this run list. So it's gonna go through that. I'm gonna switch off of this, but right now it's gonna be, it's downloading from uh, Hosted Chef. But you know, you could have your own open source Chef server or private Chef or whatever. Um, and it's slowly, slowly going to do all that stuff. So, yeah, that's, and, and it'll get to the MySQL master uh, part of the run list. Uh, RabbitMQ server, uh, this is going to call uh, the base role yet again. It's going to call the default Erlang recipe. This installs Erlang. You know, not super exciting. We don't need to look at that. Uh, but it, you know, I think it's pulling it off of, uh, uh, you know, the latest version of Erlang or the distro one if that's what you choose. Um, and then it's going to call Rabbit OpenStack Server. This is just like the MySQL uh, OpenStack. Um, this is just kind of helper stuff. See, it's still going. So they have, you know, this is just a, a, an OpenStack cookbook wrapper. So here we're generating a password. Uh, you know, that Rabbit's going to use. 
Uh, we're including the OSOPS utils to give us those, those helper methods. Uh, we're including the monitoring stuff. Uh, and then we're going to uh, pull in platform options. So the, the rabbit cook, uh, so it actually has uh, a set of uh, a hash mapped to that attribute. And we're going to just pull stuff off of platform options because it, this actually works on uh, Red Hat uh, Red Hat 6 or on uh, Ubuntu 1204. Uh, then we'll, you know, th we might override our RabbitMQ port, uh, you know, which, uh, which IP we have. Need to listen on all IPs so we can use a floating VIP. Then there's some notes for uh, their developers. Uh, and then there's some case logic here about uh, since the upstream Rabbit MQ server does crazy things, like install packages from random app repos, I fixed that. Um, so their wrapper here is because the Rabbit cookbook upstream uh, didn't know. Well, there was this period of time before Rabbit 3 came out that some distros were shipping 1.8 or 1.4, some distros were shipping 2.6, 2.8, and now that 3.0 is out, it breaks everything too. Uh, I fixed all that in the Rabbit 2.0 cookbook. But what this is doing is just pinning, uh, pinning that we only want to use the distro version of Rabbit. So this is kind of janky, and you don't need this anymore. Uh, but that's what it's there for. Um, yeah, see, and I fixed all this stuff. Red Hat works. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, are there any other rabbits out there? So get settings by role is another helper method out of OSOPS utils. Um, and we're looking for uh, you know, other rabbit in, rabbits if we're doing clustering. And then this is just going to include the default rabbit recipe and go ahead and install it right there. Yes, right, yep. Uh, and then it's going to restart the service Holy, I fixed this too. <laughs> uh, so Rabbit has some weird, uh, uh, it doesn't have a good init D um, setup. Uh, <laughs> I don't go down, I go up. Yeah, uh, I, I think I even told you guys I fixed it. I posted to the mailing list uh, that Rabbit 2.0 came out. Yeah, it fixes all this janky stuff. Yeah, but at least here there you see um, RabbitMQ user. So uh, in Chef, uh, there are resources that are bundled with Chef. So resources like service, you know, manages services. It's part of Chef. It's built into Chef. Um, there's some other resources in here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Wow, we're using a lot of custom ones here. Um, but if you are getting a particular resource, if you need to write new ones that are not provided by Chef, uh, we call those lightweight resource providers. You can bundle them inside a cookbook to add new functionality. So here we see apt. The apt cookbook is uh, giving you the ability to set preferences for how apt behaves. It's not part of Chef, but if you need to use apt, the apt cookbook can give you new functionality. As we see here, the rabbit cookbook uh, will do users for you. You know, you don't have to go and type, you know, rabbit control user add blah, blah, blah. You just use the LWRPs that handle that. Um, and so their monitoring cookbook is providing, you know, a Procmon resource, a metric resource. Uh, and that's just, you know, for those of you all who aren't familiar with it, that's where this, and then you, uh, you the underscore signifies it's coming out of the rabbit cookbook. Uh, and so the rabbit cookbook does users, uh, queues, um, I can't think of the host, and there's pull requests for like everything else that you might do. And there's test, and it works with three and two, and you know. And uh, yeah, and then they do their keep alive VIP setup stuff for Rabbit. So you probably don't care about that if you're running on a single box. So that's Rabbit now is set up. We've got MySQL, we've got Rabbit. Now we're getting into OpenStack itself. So, you know, this is kind of table stakes for uh, our OpenStack install. We're going to use Keystone. You know? uh, there we see the base role again. Uh, and we have, oh, I left out the, the Keystone API role. I bet I can tell you what it does. Um, Keystone server is going to go and, and set up the basics. So let's look 
add keystone. Oh, look at that, it blew up. So here was, here's my, my, my node running. Uh, let me make that bigger. All right, so here was our, our, long, our long run list that we're slowly making our way through. Yes, we're all the way on the third line. We are in Keystone. Um, but then it synchronized all the cookbooks and compiled them, and then it threw a warning about uh, some constant being reused. That's just warning, so who cares? Um, and then it sees that uh, uh, app get update. Lots of people called it all, and it said, "Hey, whoa! You know, we don't need. You know, we don't need. Uh, uh, you know, you cloned it. We're only going to call it once up front, um, and that's kind of the behavior you want." Uh, and then it's, it went off to the races here. Uh, executed app get update. Uh, then it called build essential. Um, build essential was in the uh, MySQL. Uh, the Ruby, when it needed to be able to build Ruby gems, so it installed the build essentials, which is your, you know, Ruby, it's your build tool chain. Um, you know, and so it installed all this junk, which is good junk. Uh, and then we saw it installed the MySQL client, that's what uh, MySQL Ruby uh, also installs. And then the, the My, you know, MySQL dev, and then it blew up because all the OSOPS util stuff was like, hey, you don't have any networks, you don't have any real networks um, that mapped all this stuff. So, and at the end, oh look at that, new version control plane. Um, uh, at, at the end, even though it blows up, when the chef client runs, uh, on success or failure, it gets caught and there's a, uh, a report handler or an exception handler. Basically, that gives you the full context of the run and you can then take it and send it somewhere. So, you know, in this case, I don't have any exception handlers, uh, but I could have like, hey, I need to email this. If a chef client run fails anywhere, email, you know, ServiceNow or whatever, or send a trap or pager duty or whatever. Um, you know, that's handy to have. There are about 40 uh, exception report handlers on, on the community site, IRC, HipChat, Twitter, whatever. So, uh, you know, syslog. Do you use the syslog report handler? You should, because you already have syslog. <laughs> uh, there's, there's also a really nice one for Splunk uh, and Logstash, too. Um, oh, yes, Keystone Server. So here's our Keystone Server recipe. generating yet another password. Uh, so it's gonna set up syslog for Keystone. I don't need to go into that. Uh, it calls MySQL client, uh, MySQL Ruby, which were previously called. Um, so those don't get run again. Uh, OSF utils doesn't get run again. Monitoring doesn't get run again, but that's, that's cool. Um, and here they've got some debugging stuff for uh, if we're in developer mode, it you know, sets a, a known password because uh, you know, I'm sure these guys debug this stuff a lot. There we pull the platform options hash out so we can call things. Uh, you know, rather than say you know, node, keystone, platform, you know, red hat, on and on and on, they you know, pull down just the hash. Uh, so they're going to call create DB and user. This is another helper method out of OSOPS utils. It goes and creates whatever we set up as attributes for Keystone uh, with our name or username and password. So, you know, uh, and then go and get the access endpoint uh, for MySQL. So we can do all this. So then I bet MySQL. Oh, they installed MySQL packages again. I got some refactoring here I'd like to do someday. Because everyone calls Keystone stuff. Uh, and I really hate that Keystone sleep thing. Um, Keystone behaves kind of wonky, so they give it a, a 10 second sleep to give it time to start up. Because it's like, I'm ready for business, and it's not. It's lying. Um, so that's what's going on there. But here we installed the Keystone service. Pretty basic stuff. Uh, we're enabling it, which doesn't, isn't the same thing as start. You know, we're just saying, hey, put it in, in at D, put it at the right run levels. Uh, it supports status and restart. Um, and then it notifies that, that sleep. So it's saying, hey, 
we're enabled. You know, if uh, if anybody st restarts Keystone, you still have to sleep. You know, so any time that Keystone gets run, it calls the sleep, which slows things down. Um, then we set up some more monitoring stuff, create the Etsy Keystone, you know, hard coding your Keystone users. Uh, then they call, uh, you know, Keystone Manage DB Sync. Here they're using these Git access endpoints. Uh, just the at helper method again. The logic down in the OSOPS utils will actually look and see if you have a managed uh, private network or a management network. Um, so that traffic stays off the public interface. So it's, the, you know, rather than clutter up the recipe, you have helper methods to, to hide that away. Uh, what is this package component stuff? Oh, I guess if you were using something besides Folsom. And then they have this massive amount of stuff that goes into the Keystone Conf. Um, you know, all these variables get passed in. Uh, some of them, like these node calls, could come within the template. You can call the node directly. Uh, and this just makes it easier to see all the stuff that is going into the template in one place. And it's a lot of stuff, but Keystone has a lot of settings. And some of them are more, some of them are worse than others, like the Nova Conf. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if you need Essex cookbooks, uh, my, I, so uh, we're going, we're, they're in, they're almost done with Grizzly. Uh, there are Grizzly branches and forks of, lots of people have Grizzly like already working or close to working. HubSpot, who gave the keynote the other day, they're using Grizzly on bare metal. Um, and so uh, there are, we had a session today to talk about, you know, kind of catching everybody up with each other, and we'll be coming together back on Grizzly, you know, uh, probably in about a, a month or so. Uh, but notice here at the end of this template, you know, so this a big template. Um, so template is just pulling in the, it's writing out your Keystone Conf off of uh, this ERB file, which is just a Ruby templating language. Um, and then anytime this file changes, you know, it will regenerate it, but it's gonna send notifications to resync the DB and uh, restart the Keystone. So remember Keystone just enabled? It just said, hey, set it up, don't start it. It waits for, the, for the, the templates to get rendered. And so anytime you might make a Keystone change, Keystone gets restarted, and then, of course, the Keystone service then sleeps for 10 seconds. Yes. Yes. Well, yes. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you manage that uh, as you would expect. And make sure you have a reporter exception handler that sends a diff that captures all the changes and sends them somewhere so someone notices, oh, we accidentally did all these changes. It's a nice thing to have. Uh, then they are deleting one of the pack files that gets bundled in with Keystone. Um, this is the uh, uh, the flat file for SQLite. You know they're not using it; they're using MySQL. Um, there are cookbooks that are using Postgres if you're into Postgres, uh, and and probably soon it'll support both. Um, writing out their their Keystone logging conf which, again, restarts Keystone. Uh, and what, do you mean to have all the immediately's in here for restarting them? Because if you don't put the immediately's, it'll cascade and restart Keystone at the end. Actually, you, you do, though. Yeah, anytime you touch Keystone, you have to restart it in case someone needs Keystone. Yeah, well, yeah, everyone loves Keystone. Yeah. Keystone light forever. Yeah. Uh, then they're going to go and create tenants for Keystone. Um, so the, the, the Keystone tenants are set. Oh, this is going to be fun. So let's look at the attributes file for Keystone. Oh, yeah. Well, no, it's not. This is all the things that you might possibly set on Keystone. You know, page after page of stuff. But I was looking for tenants. 
Okay, so admin and service. Yeah, it should be from a user's hash keys or something. I mean, there's a lot of things that you might do. And then, you know, depending on which OS you're using, you might have different settings. Packages have different names. But you abstract it all out into your attributes file so it doesn't clutter up your recipe uh, with a whole bunch of, you know, if Ubuntu do this, if Red Hat do that. Uh, yeah, so they're using, uh, there's, in, in Chef, there's platform and there's platform family. So uh, platform is more specific to the OS, so, you know, Fedora. Yeah, Fedora, Red Hat, same thing like the Yeah, yeah, so they could call it platform family of RHEL, and then that would also give you uh, scientific and unbreakable or whatever they call their LSB tag. Because um, uh, you guys really want to run on, on, sign, on, L, on uh, Oracle's Red Hat. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, it, that's why we have both. We have platform family for when it's really the same. I mean, platform family at Debian includes Ubuntu. You know, and Mint and, you know, lots of other stuff. But when it's not the same, then you say, you know, case platform and you can pick the ones you actually want. And things like Fedora, you know, Fedora 12 is not the same as 18. You know, so then you might actually have to go into, like, OS version. Yeah, but it's nice to try to pull up as much of it into the same commonality as you can. And you guys probably, you know, haven't seen a lot of Mint uh, installs of OpenStack. Um, so it's going to have this for loop, you know, a nice each do tenant name and just create those Keystone tenants. Here's uh, Keystone Tenant is another lightweight resource provider. It has a tenant helper, you know, that just goes and, and automatically creates these for you. You know, it has a whole lot of uh, attributes you can set, but it's a Keystone Tenant. There are a lot of things you might have there. Uh, same with Keystone Roles. You know, there's another loop over all the roles that are provided, and then all the Keystone users. And there's. You could, you could. Um, we put it into a uh, into attributes, so somewhere you could just have a data bag to attributes dump. You know, but yeah, a data bag will give you a nice file to manage it in. So would an attributes file or a role or an environment. You know, there are lots of places to just stash your, stash them. And all of them would be backed in version control, which is a nice thing to have. Uh, and then for each of the roles, uh, it's going to go and grant permissions you know, for all the tenants. Then we have a whole bunch of you know, Keystone service. Uh, you know, and then we add uh, Keystone endpoints. Keystone users, and then some monitoring stuff. And then at the end, Keystone client patch, because I guess there's some patch that they're mainlining because it's not upstream yet. So their Keystone server is now up. Uh, I, don't, yeah, I don't have the Keystone API up here, but let's take a quick look at that. And it calls Keystone API. So it's pretty straightforward. And I, that's. Oh, Keystone, Keystone API. You know, and it calls syslog, OS ops utils, monitoring, uh, installs whatever Keystone packages are there, which. This all happened before, but it's okay. It's okay to have duplication. I mean, it's not it's not dry, but it could probably cleaned up some. This is all previously coded. Am I looking at the right? I guess this is if you put your Keystone API in a separate box. Um, Yeah, yeah. 
So that's why they're separate. The, the Keystone includes Keystone API in case you had them on separate boxes, in case you didn't hear that. So Keystone, now set up, fully populated, uh, and we're good to go. So now Glance Setup is followed by Glance Registry and Glance API. Probably, and each one of those, they call the base role again. So if your glance machines were spread across, you know, uh, two machines, three, machi three machines, um, uh, it would all have that. So let's take a look into uh, the fun world of glance. And if you have any questions, please speak up, because, you know, I'm just talking to my laptop here. Yes? Yes. Uh, when you say redeploy, anytime you converge, no, no. So that uh, uh, when you write a, a, an LWRP, um, you need to be uh, item potent. So they need to be safe to, to be run multiple times. So I would assume in the, the Keystone uh, LWRPs, it actually checks to see if that user is already there before trying to create them again. Um, and if it is, it's a no-op, and it doesn't notify anything. And so if it doesn't restart Keystone each time, you know, if, if, so after you run Keystone through once, all those guys are there. If nothing changes, it goes really fast, because it no-ops, 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 and it's done. And so you know, the first time we run this on, when I run this on like bare metal, I've got some you know, 16 gig machines with SSDs, takes about 12 minutes to converge this all in one. And I've got, you know, app cache and G, so I'm not even downloading from the internet. It's just, it takes a long time to set up all these services, especially with all the, the uh, Keystone sleeps. Um, <laughs> but the next time I run it, it's like 15 seconds. It's like, you know, doot, 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 doot. You know, everything's already there. The packages are already installed. You know, and that's really important because then I can do things like dry run. I can say, well, what would happen if I were to run this? And it would say, oh, Nothing changes, nothing changes, nothing changes. Or I could say, you know, oh, here's a file that I would change, here's the diff, and that's, you know. So, yeah, yeah, and so you can, you can run dry run mode. Oh yeah, and then that makes it like, it's safe to run the chef client any time because it's not gonna make any changes. So some folks will run chef client as a daemon, and every 30 minutes it converges, or, you know, or whatever you like. Uh, a lot of people do it daily. Um, you know, or you can just run it manually. Yeah, and a lot of people actually run it on cron, and they run it at the top of the hour or the bottom of the hour, and at hosted chef, we get It does in 11. Yeah, so uh, chef 11 ha has a lock, and it's smart enough not to, so yeah, that first time you call the chef client, and it's taking 40 minutes to install OpenStack. Uh, it's okay if you call it again, because it has a lock now. Um, but I'm sure OpenStack was one of the reasons we have that lock. <laughs> yeah, Java, anything Java. <sighs> yeah. Uh, so what, I was looking at Glance. Oh. So yeah, Glance, a bunch of recipes we've seen before. Get roll count. Wait, what? You can only have one node with the Glance setup role. Okay. So they're looking to see if anybody else thinks they're the Glance setter upper, and if there are, they're like die. You know, there can only be one. Um, make like a Highlander resource. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there can only be one. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then you know some some boilerplate for setting up uh, users. There's that Python Keystone thing that should be pulled out into just a Keystone helper um, because we're going to see it like nine times. Uh, and then we pull out the key. We then Glance says, "Hey, I need to talk to Keystone. Go and get the access endpoints." And so this is that OSOP utils helper method. Um, then it's going to go and say, "Hey, my SQL, go create my." Keep my glance stuff. Uh, package curl install. Okay, you might need curl, I guess. Um, yeah, curls for the images. 
Why not remote file? Okay, there's a, there's a remote file resource inside of Chef. Um, you know, and then they go and pull off of their, uh, they install whatever, uh, that MySQL stuff again. Man, this is some boilerplate that needs to be. Then they take out the SQLite stuff. Then they do more Keystone stuff. You know, Keystone tenants, users, roles, Etsy glance, Etsy glance login, glance registry conf. Just writing all this fun stuff. Uh, they have some problem with that glance console log. And then they call glance db sync. And glance is now set up. After glance set up, it was glance registry. So there are two services to glance. Uh, and a whole lot of duplication from the other guy, you know, of the MySQL, the, the syslog, the monitoring. Man, this, yeah, there, there's definitely some, uh, you know, code cleanup that could happen here. Um, but it's easy to throw stones, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it works. And everybody forks it. Um, yeah, uh, and you know. Yep, yeah, here's a whole bunch of, you know, the same stuff we saw in the glance setup. The reason, of course, is these might run on different machines. And it's safe, it's okay to have duplication. Uh, but then they have the, the glance API uh, service that, you know. And yeah, so we don't. And then there's you know setting up the glance registry, paste INI file. So uh, we're not going to look at API unless people really want to. It's almost the same. Huh? So we now have Keystone. We now have Glance. This is awesome. We can uh, you know serve up images. So Nova setup. This is going to uh, configure a box to be ready for Nova. Is this session over at 5.20? Okay. I mean, yeah, we can all kick off and go get some beers or something. But, um, uh, fortunately, no. So, oh, I got, a, I got a company card. So Nova Setup. Uh, that boilerplate stuff. Uh, then we're going to go get our Keystone endpoints. Then we're going to create our Nova DB stuff. Uh, then we're going to sync the, the Nova uh, database schema. It's, and then they've got a Nova plugin uh, monitoring thing that they've added. You know. So that's, you know, that's not standard OpenStack. So, Nova setup has created the schema for Nova. It's not super uh, exciting, but you know you have to have that stuff. Uh, Nova network controller uh, is going to set up Nova networking. This is the first step of, of setting up uh, your Nova box. Uh, we're not using quantum here. Um, I know in the, the roles, uh, there's some quantum stuff that they've started. I assume come Grizzly, uh, they'll be having OVS or, yeah, OVS, and then, you know, Within the Chef community, there's, you know, uh, Metonet and Nicira and uh, some other stuff. Um, Nova. Oh, Nova Network is a separate cookbook. Yeah, I was, no, yeah, Nova Network is actually a separate cookbook. Why is Nova Network a separate cookbook? Oh, this is where they're doing their quantum stuff. Oh, and, I, and sorry, I said quantum. 
Um, Nova Networks. OpenStack Networks. OpenStack Networks. Yeah, we'll have to rename all this fun stuff. So, Nova Network, Nova Network. So, it's calling Nova Common, which, uh, how's that different from Nova Setup? Oh boy, so Nova Common sets up uh, your Nova Conf. Oh, you guys have an LWRP for Nova Conf, excellent. Are you using uh, partials? Awesome, so Chef 11 added the concept of partial template rendering, so multiple, multiple cookbooks can manage the same file. Uh, OpenStack is like the, the most abusive case of that, of course, because everyone is sticking into Nova Conf. So, Someday we'll have conf D directories, that'll be awesome. Uh, but until then, we have a NovaConf uh, LWRP to handle that. So all they do is tag in the release, set up login for Nova, write out the OpenRC. So when you create Nova, uh, you can say, you know, hey, here are the credentials I want to use, or it'll go and uh, generate them for you. Um, oh look, backwards compatibility for NovaRC. Uh, and then they go and uh, create a, a login for the Nova user. So that's what Nova Common did, was you know, set up that base stuff, and then they install the Nova Network packages, uh, install the Nova Network service, well, they enable it, and then it says, hey, subscribe to the Nova Comp file. If anybody changes that, restart the service. And, you know, as you can probably guess, uh, since it says delayed, they're expecting lots of people to change Nova Conf, and delayed means at the end of that, the Nova network w network service will will restart. Which is you know what you need to do. Usually, delayed is actually the default, uh, but uh, for Keystone, we need a Keystone up all the time. I'll every t ten second w waits and all. Yeah, so, uh, yes, delayed is the default, but they're being very explicit about the defaults, just so as a casual user, you may come in and not know that delayed is, you know, is there. Uh, same with, like, package install. Uh, install is the default. Some people write it. You don't even have to list it. It, it yeah. Yeah, it's easier to read and uh, easier to come back and change it if, if you need it to be something else. I'm not, I'm not hating, I'm explaining it. <laughs> uh, Nova Scheduler, you know, the next part of, of Nova, it's gonna look a lot like what we just saw. Oh, that's not it. So there's Nova Common again, making sure that our Nova Conf is on the machine, because maybe your scheduler is on a different machine from your API, from everything else. Uh, go in uh, creating the, the Nova lock file, um, installing our Nova scheduler packages, installing the Nova scheduler, uh, which is subscribed to the Nova Conf, and it's also subscribed to the, uh, the login conf. The other one was too, right? I'm sure it was. And then, you know, monitoring stuff. Uh, and then including a Nova scheduler patch, which I'm sure is just a backport or something. And look at that. Affinity filters don't work if scheduler hints is none. So, you know, sometimes you have to p patch stuff. Yeah, don't look at the sausage. Let me walk you through the sausage. Um, <laughs> <What's>... <laughs> uh, well, I mean, he's saying, you know, yeah, don't, just enjoy the sausage. <laughs> End of the day. Uh, so API EC2, they're going to uh, install both uh, the OpenStack and the EC2 APIs. Um, so here we see OS, the OS Compute API and the EC2 API, and then the storage API gets done uh, later, and the Swift API uh, 
the Sender API gets installed by Sender, and you know, so the OpenStack API actually gets broken out more. Um, not super exciting, but let's take a quick look at those. And we're about to start getting faster. So there we see. Absolutely. So there is a knife. Uh, there's a knife OpenStack plugin. Um, if uh, the slides from my talk Monday about the state of Chef and OpenStack uh, kind of went through that, um, those are up on SlideShare, Matt Ray, if you want them. Uh, eventually, they'll have all the recordings for the talks, and uh, you know, you'll see me tell, say the same thing. Um, but yeah, it works on Diablo and up, and it uses the OpenStack API, and it's been tested with like most of the OpenStack vendors who are here. So even if you don't set up you know, OpenStack with Chef, you can still run your infrastructure on top of that OpenStack with Chef. Well, I was thinking if it's the case that the APIs are the developers decided they didn't like typing all those commands to load a tool in Ruby, and there was one plugin, which I don't even think they like it. But if I move them to OpenStack, they're going to have to rewrite their tool. Right, right. So we have Knife OpenStack because we have Knife EC2, Knife Rackspace, Knife. 36 other clouds, so. Um, so yeah, they're, they're the different API recipes. Uh, we'll just take a quick look at compute and probably skip over the others. But it's, you know, we're seeing kind of this boilerplate pattern of Nova Common, monitoring, package, you know, creating the Python keystone stuff, installing the packages, installing the service, monitoring, monitoring, uh, getting the Keystone endpoint, adding ourselves to Keystone as a service registry, all that Keystone stuff, writing out our Nova API uh, template, and registering our compute endpoint. So uh, the, other, the other, trust me, the other APIs are very similar. <laughs> so Nova Volume uh, is our volume service. Um, is this? Uh, That's the one that we use in Yeah, I, I bet if we get in there. I expect if we get in here. Include recipe Nova release volume. So release volume, Fulsum volume is now calling sender. So a little backwards compatibility. Uh, probably when I release my grizzly stuff, I'll drop all this because <laughs> I'm like, there's no, there's no going back. Uh, but these guys have to support multiple installations. So, again, not a fun problem. But uh, so looking into the sender cookbook, recipes, sender, is that the first one? Sender setup, API, and scheduler. Oh boy. So sender looks like lots of other stuff. You know, syslog, debug, uh, MySQL, put ourselves into Keystone, uh, find the API, find the various sender endpoints, create our sender uh, stuff on the database. Uh, in this case, we have one MySQL and everyone uses the same one. You know, you could technically break this up if you wanted to, uh, but we don't. Um, I mean, you could have a MySQL tied to the service, but why? Um, you know, set up the uh, call sender DB sync, logging, sender conf. You know, uh, here's NetApp support. Uh, I guess you guys are doing just, just NetApp? Yeah, they're doing NetApp. Uh, there's also sender plugins for LVM. Uh, so sender plugins for NetApp write to the, to, to the fiber? Or is that plugin that you just want to test? What does the, the sender NetApp plugin do?
So we've got an IRC channel, uh, Chef OpenStack, OpenStack Chef, OpenStack Chef that like there's usually about 40 people in it, including a bunch of rackers. And so, you know, you can find these guys and they'll answer your questions. Yeah. Um, I was I was trying to look through the, attri the attributes to see if it was in here, but I don't see SCSI target. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's there's NetApp, there's LVM, there's Ceph. Uh, it's probably something else that I'm forgetting, but yeah, it's been a long week. Uh, so then, oh, I guess there's still more sender stuff. You know, sender sets up the API, registers itself with Keystone. And then it's going to do the sender API, the sender scheduler. I mean, it's, you know, Keystone, Keystone. Oh, it actually uses Rabbit. Installs the sender API packages, writes out its logging, writes out its comp file, and its API paste, I know. Deletes its SQLite file that gets packaged in the, the distro package, and then adds monitoring. You know, so it sets up the three sender services. And then Nova Volume. <laughs> so Nova Cert is the uh, uh, Nova, Nova Certificate Service. Go. Start up the Install the packages, start up the Nova Cert service, you know, and it looks at the Nova Conf and the Nova Logging Conf. Yeah, not super exciting, but one of the many services. And then it adds uh, Nova VNC proxy, which is kind of cool because you know uh, it's nice to be able to VNC right into the box from Horizon. goes and installs all the console auth stuff and the VNC packages, sets up the VNC proxy service, you know, and then adds monitoring for it. Uh, you know, the console auth service. And more, oh, so there's the VNC console auth service and the VNC, VNC proxy service. And so it installs both of those. And so you now have uh, Nova running. <laughs> Keystone, Glance, Nova, and Horizon. Horizon is a lot simpler. Uh, well, not a lot simpler, but it calls the base role, it calls MySQL client, it calls MySQL Ruby, and then it calls Horizon server. And the Horizon server recipe is probably going to do, anyone, anyone? Uh, install Apache and Django and Uh, oh, and turn off SC Linux. Yeah, so there it's going to include the Apache cookbook from the community site has like 40 recipes because every mod whatever gets configured. Um, in this case, we need Mosgy, uh, mod whiskey rewrite in SSL. Uh, and then it's going to go and uh, write out uh, uh, the ports conf to not listen on all IPs. Um, they do some more SC Linux stuff. Uh, there's actually an SC Linux cookbook that has, well, maybe doesn't do exactly this. Uh, create the keystone endpoints, the database, install the packages, write out uh, their local settings pi file, or what, whatever their local settings file may be. Oh, OpenStack dashboard sync DB. Not sure why there's a fix me. Um, then they're going to pull uh, uh, Horizon PEM uh, out of the out of the cookbook and write it to this file system. <laughs> I'm not a Django guy, so I don't know all the 
stuff that's going on here. Stop Apache complaining. Uh, and then write out the right uh, template for Keystone. Uh, apparently it has a different, or for Horizon, apparently it has a different name uh, or, and location, depending on what it is. This could be refactored a little. Uh, you know, write out their dashboard conf, remove the Ubuntu theme, um, and then, do you guys install a Rackspace theme? No, just, okay, it's vanilla. It takes off the Ubuntu theme, puts on, leaves the uh, the Ubuntu, the, the, the vanilla theme. So, you know, we could add another recipe that, you know, you could throw in a graphic and you could theme it yourself, you know. Okay, okay, they, if you use their installer, it will brand it for you, uh, but this recipe does not. So, I'm sure that that code's probably on GitHub somewhere. Um, and then it goes and deals with a lot of dirty hacks. <laughs> I'm sure th everything's probably better in Grizzly. Grizzly looks really nice. Oh yeah, here we go. Right, write all this stuff and pull it off of Rackspace's CDN even. Look at that. So there's use of remote file instead of curl. And then they're actually making, wow, what are you guys doing? <laughs> Keep going, nothing to see here. Horizon gets set up, boom. <laughs> Horizon gets set up, and you now have Keystone, Glance, Nova, and Horizon. You have a dashboard working, and you have your full single controller is done. That box can sit over here, and anybody who wants to become a compute node runs the single compute role, and it calls Nova Network Compute, which we already saw, uh, which sets up the Nova Networking Service on that box, uh, and then it calls the Nova Compute Recipe, which is not, is the last thing we're gonna see. So it's gonna go and install packages. Um, and oh, if if you're uh, if you set it to KVM, it adds an additional package. This could get refactored into attributes because uh, now with Chef Eleven, attributes can be evaluated inside the attributes file. Just nice to have. Um, install the the packages. Write out your Nova compute conf. Uh, configure libvirt, libvirt D. So this will get refactored a little bit for the bare metal driver, uh, where we'll, uh, I probably has already been refactored in, in uh, HubSpot's branch, um, or their fork, uh, where there'll be an attribute that says which hypervisor you're using, and then it'll call different recipes. Yeah. But the logic will, because uh, I think in mine I've got LXC. You guys aren't using LXC? Yeah, I've got, so my, my, my branch, my fork has LXC and KVM, yeah, because uh, I was working with Calzada and they needed LXC. Um, but then it's gonna install the Nova Compute Service, monitor it, uh, install Nova Libvirt, and uh, remove uh, a kernel module, uh, and then enable IP forwarding. And then you have KVM running on a box pointed at your API, uh, and you can log into Horizon, create instances. You know, depending on your hardware, uh, it could take you know five minutes uh, if you have all SSDs and blazing fast, or it could take an hour. <laughs> but it's done. Um, so that is that is what all in one looks like. The Swift. Uh, I mean, we got like five minutes or something, but Swift actually. Uh, uh, there's a Swift all-in-one that will do it, and or you can you know run Swift on multiple nodes as well. Uh, just for the interest of time, I knew we wouldn't be able to get to that. Um, the uh, the various forks of, of uh, uh, cookbooks that are floating around. Um, we're going to try to reconsolidate, uh, and I'll submit a talk uh, for the Havana conference um, or the I conference in Hong Kong about whether or not we actually got that to happen. Uh, so 
uh, Rackspace, AT&T, Dell, DreamHost, um, uh, SUSE, uh, HubSpot, OpsCode, um, and others are all work get on the same code base essentially. We all have forks of this and uh, IBM. So, uh, any questions? Yes. So, what does VMware need to know about in order to become a complete platform for my own stuff? Uh, well, in this framework, we'd have to have you know a, a recipe that configures uh, VMware for you. Um, well, I mean, I've already got a VMware farm. Okay, if you already have a VMware farm. VMware hosts. Right. Probably there, we would you would have uh, an environment file that has like there's the VMware, here's the creds. Okay. Um, I have an issue working on my environment. As long as that works, it should work. Or I mean, does VMware really need to know about the no, uh, open stack? No, I think what you do need is to give you a lot of the, the code you need in the VMware host file. You have to say, uh, I don't even remember what the settings are, but it has to be, you have to give it a, a, a regular window log. Or, or Cody Bunch at Rackspace. <laughs> no, but I, you know, you know where all the bodies are. I mean, you can find you can find everybody, and he's, he knows a little bit about VMware. But uh, yeah, um, probably by the I Summit, there will be uh, bare metal Nova. There will be there's already KVM and LXC. Uh, and then we'll also, uh, SUSE wanted to add Zen, and uh, that's probably where we'll stop. You know, for, for the choices, we'll probably be supported in the mainline cookbooks. Um, and that's, you know, and if somebody wants to do uh, VMware or Hyper-V, we wouldn't be opposed to it. Yeah. So questions, yes? The, the, so the question is, uh, how did Razor get to this? Uh, there was, these cookbooks were going to, you know, that all-in-one role was going to be applied to a node, uh, and then that was created in Razor. So Razor was going to provision the OS, put the chef client on it, and the chef client was going to be given the all-in-one role as its run list, which would have expanded into this and actually, you know, look like all this. And if it was running on VirtualBox, it would take like two days. But you would eventually get, you know, Razor, huh? Well, depending on your laptop, you know, uh, or in your case, a, a tablet. So it would never well, happen. So to VBox's credit, 4.2 is slightly faster? Yeah. No, I mean, his tablet's never going to work. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Is it an Android tablet? I mean, we can, we can probably force fit something into Oregon. There you go. Uh, but but that was the, the yeah, I guess the, the missing step there was we were going to take the Razor node and apply this and, you know, while I talked for the last hour and a half, it would have, it would have finished. Uh, and, you know, I figured with most people leaving the conference, it would have been better. I tried to, well, not, not significantly, though. I've been trying to spin up a VM for the last five or six minutes here, and it's been trying to pull down the precise 64 box. And it's, uh, yeah, I'm still at like 2%. <laughs> hey. Okay. Yeah. So Somebody it does needs to work. Somebody a torrent client. Ah. So yes, it does work. It just. Yeah, I've seen it work at least once. Yeah.
Yes. Well, like, you know, this one blew up and gave us a nice stack trace and told us exactly in the recipe, hey, I blew up in, you know, cookbooks, OSOPS utils, libraries, IP location, and I was called by MySQL OpenStack server recipe. Yeah. When your production stuff blows. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, yeah. In production. Yeah. So now it's a big thing. How do you ensure that the driver is going to be able to respond and what level of all of this is that actually? Because the real danger is like if you download the recipe and watch the driver, you can accidentally go to the driver on the screen. So. Okay, so so the the dry run inside of Chef Client, uh, if I say you know Chef Client dash W, it's actually called Y run, uh, or I mean it's dash W. Uh, we call it Y run because it tells you the assumptions it's making as it goes, um, and and it sh and then the whole way along it's saying, you know, hey, this file's actually here. Here's the diff. You know what I would change. Here's what I would do. So it tries to get as close as possible to what is there, but. You don't ever know what really happens until you hit, take off the dash W and you run it. Yeah, we, we don't ever run a recipe in production. We've not run a dip run in dev and in test. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because um, even when you're testing, you know, it, it might load for some JVM. Mm -hmm. Right, and we're, we're uh, the, the cookbooks themselves that everyone is kind of collaborating on, we're gonna uh, uh, apply to be included in StackForge. So we will get you know, the CI for OpenStack uh, and you know, the uh, Garrett code review for the, those of us who are working on them. Um, and then everyone will slave off of that for their various configurations, because you know, it'll still only do a, you know, a few nodes, but uh, you know, everyone, everyone has a really different OpenStack deployment, but it actually, you know, since we're running things through attributes and the patterns don't really change much, it's safe for SUSE on Postgres on Zen and Rackspace on Ubuntu on, you know, Okay. Well, I think uh, for the AV guys, we'll go ahead and call it, uh, call it a day. Uh, but thanks a lot for sticking around. I uh, hope you guys had a, a good conference. And uh, see you uh, in Hong Kong.